Today on the show, we are going to be talking about how to beat a victim mindset and mommy makeovers. And Tripp is going to be talking Formula One. Yes, indeed. And I pulled this shirt out of retirement. My wife, not too happy about it. All this and more coming up right now. And welcome back to the show. So this shirt came out of retirement. Mm -hmm. It looks really good for being retired. Well, it's I, actually pressed. Yeah. Is it wrinkle proof? No, it has been pressed. Oh, nice. Okay. So we were on a cruise and part of the cruise package, you've got all your laundry done. Shirt so we laundry. were, oh my God. I love shirt laundry. It is the best. Mm -hmm. But anyway, getting back. So about a million years ago, Vegas had a champ car race, which is an indie it's basically a series like indie cars, mm -hmm. which are great cars, but kind of slow comparatively to F1. But they did a street right. course race, and I was lucky enough to be hired as their track announcer, which was an amazing thing. You know, you're on NBC Sports, and you're in front of 100,000 people. Pretty darn cool. Right. Unfortunately, the owners of the series lost $15 million bucks and went out of business. Oh, no. So fast forward a lot of years, and the real F1, Formula One, the big boys, mm -hmm. are coming to Vegas. And it's the hottest sport going. For those of you who don't follow racing, it's the most expensive, exclusive, amazing. That's the Monte Carlo race, and they travel all over the world. And the best drivers, the best equipment. Mm -hmm. Well, it's coming to Vegas. Now, How fun. I can get you a ticket. Okay, I'll be there. $200,000. Okay, I won't. But I'll, I will love it if you are there hosting I can watch you on TV well I don't know if I'll be doing that but it will be the coolest event and yeah. I'm definitely gonna be down there and it's gonna be a lot of fun and this is your world this, this is, is you have been doing this for so long and you so enjoy it and you have people who are advisors on how to bed and how to do things I mean this is your whole game the, the, right here it's like see, the world just came together for you Vegas has done some amazing events mm -hmm. and now with my friend napoleon mccallum bringing the raiders down there and and having that stadium and just all the crazy stuff this is going to be bigger this three days coming up in november will be bigger than anything that's ever happened wow how many people do you think will be coming to vegas a couple hundred thousand they've got some seats left at reasonable prices a couple thousand dollars but literally hundred thousand dollar packages sold out like Where's the track? So the track, they bought a bunch of land right off Harmon and Koval uh -huh. for a paddock area that they're building. You know, Vegas numbers are insane. Mm -hmm. These numbers are insane squared. And it's going to be going off on a Saturday night, 10 mm -hmm. o'clock. Wow. So yeah. much fun. Hey, what are we talking about next? All right, coming up next, we are going to be talking our wellness news you can use all about mommy makeovers. For the time of your life, watch Talk 365 TV twice daily on Utah's CW30 or anytime online. Today's wellness news you can use is brought to you by Fairbanks Art of Plastic Surgery. And welcome back to the show. And we're talking a little mommy makeovers. Because mm -hmm. a rumor has it that 90 plus percent of all the kids born in the history of the world are through mothers. It is true. I would say a higher stat. But nonetheless, okay. there are a lot of mommies out there who deserve a makeover if they're not feeling 100% at their best. And a mommy makeover is kind of an interesting approach because it is a mixture of multiple procedures that are packaged together that have to do with what happens in the breakdown of a mommy who's had babies, everything from a tummy tuck to a mini tummy tuck to breast dog to breast reduction to face nip and tuck, all of the things that happen after a mommy has worked so hard to have a beautiful baby and sacrifice her body, she deserves to get whatever she wants at the end of the day. So it's basically a customized menu of procedures that would address the issues that have been hitting up your body after you had a baby, and then you get it packaged together. And Dr. Grante Fairbanks, our favorite board certified plastic surgeon, 
is a specialist in mommy makeover. I mean, his tummy tucks, his breast augmentation we've talked about before, everything he approaches is from the artistic approach. He actually trains plastic surgeons from all over the world that come to train with him on how to do medical sculpting and drawing. So he's an artist first and a surgeon second, and I can't imagine anybody I would want to consult with on having myself fixed up and put back together than someone who is an artist. So are there daddy makeovers? Yes. Oh my gosh, actually there are. Yes. So a lot of the daddy yeah, makeovers. You know, it, in law, they teach you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. And I kind of <laughs> thought I knew the answer to that one, but I Did was wrong. Did you think it was no? Yeah. So no, we have a whole male procedures page. And what is really popular is like to get rid of the dad bod. So it's a little bit of liposuction around the muffin top. <laughs> And then they can do pectoral implants that are pretty low grade, but they can make them pop a little bit more. So yeah, it is. It, there's definitely daddy makeovers too. I did not mean to leave you out of this game, but we were focusing a little bit more on the mommy makeover because we have Crystal coming up who had a multitude of surgeries done and it just really brought her game back together. And when you see this, pay attention because she had a blepharoplasty procedure done just prior to us doing this segment with her and you can't even tell. She just looks absolutely beautiful absolutely natural, which is what Dr. Grant A. Fairbanks, our board certified plastic surgeon, specializes in. Talk 365 TV's Wellness Minute is brought to you by wellness team expert, Dr. Grant A. Fairbanks. Dr. Fairbanks and his nurse were so compassionate. It's like, you know, he's, he's drawing a piece of art as far as what you want to look like. You want to look natural and, and beautiful. And I'm kind of a, a walking poster for a referral for Dr. Fairbanks. I had um, a, a breast augmentation and then years later I wasn't satisfied with my tummy and um, had a lot of stretch marks. And no matter how much weight I lost and how many crunches I did, it was still just saggy. So I went in to meet Dr. Fairbanks and uh, had a consultation. And within a month, um, I, I had my tummy tuck. After that, um, it turned out really well. Uh, he tells me that I'm one of his models, so to speak, for the tummy tuck. I'm just, I'm really happy about where my belly button is because my belly button was totally in the wrong place after I had both of my girls. It was just, it, it was beautiful. I was able to wear a bikini and it just, it felt normal and natural again. Several years later, as I began to age, um, I wanted just to have some refinements on my face and had bags under my eyes and a little bit of drooping on my upper eyelids. So I was, of course, I'm gonna go see Dr. Fairbanks because I feel very confident and I trust him very much. And he recommended that I had the upper and lower eyelid reconstructive surgery. Now I am three months post-surgery and I'm so satisfied with the results. No more bags, I don't have the, the hooding on my upper eyelids. People don't even notice. I went out to uh, dinner with my friends and they, did, they couldn't even figure out where my scars were. They were shocked to learn that um, I had the surgery in such a short amount of time and um, I'm, I'm happy with the results. With the consultation process with my, my tummy tuck, Dr. Fairbanks spent a significant amount of time with me. Generally, my husband will come in because he wants to kind of learn about what the procedure will be because he'll be my caregiver um, after any surgery. He didn't have a chance to that time, but uh, Dr. Fairbanks and his nurse were so compassionate about not only did I, of course, want to look better because of the stretch marks, but it was just something for my confidence. He gets out his sketch pad, he draws, me and how I look now and what this, the surgery will look like later. He, from beginning to end, uh, he's, he's meticulous about what it is that I, um, I'm gonna experience. Um, it could be the side effects, what it will, will look like. Every minute detail, uh, he explains that to me. I've been in to other plastic surgeons, I truly have, to get consultations and it's, I go in, it could be a 30 minute, if that, consultation. And it's just they'll look, they'll measure, they'll do some things, and then they'll give me a price sheet. This is what it is. When you go into Dr. Fairbanks, it's very different. It's like, you know, he's he's drawing a piece of art as far as what you want to look like. You want to look natural and, and beautiful. And he explains that along with everything else that, that comes with it. As far as uh, 
my consultation for my eyes, head bags, a little bit of um, hooding on my upper eyelids. And I explained, I want to look natural. I want to look like I did 10 years ago. I didn't want to look phony or fake or surprised. And that's not the work that Dr. Fairbanks does. As far as post-surgery, everything that he told me that I would experience probably was. I was able to anticipate. I was able to get the, the care that I needed at home because Dr. Fairbanks really kind of led me to that journey as far as what it would look like because of his years of experience and the success that he's had with his patients. I, I was lucky enough to plan it during uh, the holidays, so my, my recuperation was during that time. My downtime, I was able to plan for my, my caregivers, etc. I had a little bit of a and not so much of a complication, it was just me with dry eye. Dr. Fairbanks was so responsive because I was able to text, um, this, you know, this is what I'm going through. He would text me back. It was just, I, I felt like I had care 24 seven because of the way he genuinely cares. As far as healing wise, again, it was exactly what I expected. I went in, I had my, my stitches taken out after the uh, 10 days post-op, told me what it, would, what it would look like, and like through the weeks afterwards, it was just like, yes, this is exactly what it is. This is what it looks like. I came in for a post-op. It's exactly, you know, we're exactly where we want to be. Pain-wise, nothing. I mean, it was, it was very minimal. It was, uh, I mean, painkillers, not so much. Um, it was just basically maintenance on myself, like like eyes or, or sleeping and rest and ice and things like that. And that's what Dr. Fairbanks and, and his assistants explained to me. I'm now I, three months post-op, super satisfied with the results. You can barely see the scars and um, I'm just excited. I have about three more months to go according to Dr. Fairbanks and it will just be, it will be completely healed. I would highly recommend Dr. Fairbanks, and not only would I highly recommend him, I think a referral goes a long way. Um, I've had uh, family members and friends that have come in to Dr. Fairbanks because I trust him. Um, I have coworkers that will ask, you know, are you scared to get this procedure? And I'm like, no, I'm not, because I, I trust my surgeon very much that he's going to take care of me and I'm going to have good results. My stepson has gone to him. I've had a, a friend that has had uh, some work done and I have more uh, actually. So I'm, I'm kind of a, a walking poster for a referral for Dr. Fairbanks. Talk 365 TV's Wellness Minute is brought to you by Brain Rehab Clinic. Hey, my name is James Lawrence, the Iron Cowboy and I'm best known for doing 50 Ironmans, 50 days in 50 states, and most recently, 100 consecutive full distance triathlons with no days off. And once you complete something like that, you realize how powerful the mind is, and everybody's fascinated with preparation and execution, and then when recovery happens, you realize how much trouble you're in. And I've had at least six concussions, and then also broke my back at that Conquer 100. And the back has healed itself, but I now have this incredible pain, never thought I'd run again, until I found these guys right here and Dr. Hatch is incredible and he has totally changed my life. I'm now back to running pain-free. In fact, I'm going to the world championships this year to be competitive again and that I never thought would be possible. So thank you so much to everybody here and I would recommend it to every single person that's ever experienced any trauma or anything in their lives. This place will change you. Talk 365 TV's Talking Wellness is brought to you by Brain Rehab Clinic. And good morning. We're back. As well we should be. Let's talk a little bit about a victim mindset mm. and how you can reprogram your mind. There are horrible things that happen to people all the time. Mm. And some people are able to overcome those things and get back to an amazing quality of life. Some aren't. Mm -hmm. What's the key? The key is mindset. You nailed it right in the beginning and programming and the way you think and the way you use your mind. I mean, we learned this so much from Dennis Parker's positive mind management and hypnotherapy, the way you can control your mind and brain rehab clinic who works on the physical part of your brain to rehab your brain from concussions and all of that. Um, that is one part of it. But then there is the emotional aspect that also still plays in even after you've had the healing of the actual brain and you've reconnected and have all the firing and wiring working right. If you have a pattern of negative thinking, 
you're really never going to get better no matter how better you are because that pattern is the toxic syndrome that will actually take you down every time and actually make you sick. There are so many studies out there that prove the power of thinking can make you sick or make you well, make you happy, make you sad. And this is one of those situations that a victim mindset can creep in kind of gradually. And if you don't have a strategy on how to recognize the signs and beat it, you can really get taken advantage of by it and have your life derailed. And it's, it's really unfortunate to see when you have all these good things that are available to you have something that you can control not be implemented so the team at brain rehab has been collaborating with life coaches and sherry callen is one of them and she is absolutely amazing she goes through a mini coaching of everything she approaches for how to beat a victim mindset and it's in in editing it i literally had like a life shift so you're going to really enjoy it check it out Talk 365 tv's talking wellness is brought to you by brain rehab clinic there's something very different about being a victim versus having a victim mentality or playing the role of a victim. Once we realize those two columns are different, it will empower us in our lives. Hi, I'm Sherry Cowan, a life coach here at the Brain Rehab Clinic. And in this video, we want to discuss how we are all experiencing life, right? And we're all trying to learn and grow and progress. We're trying to feel joy with our hiccups and bumps in the road, but we're trying to overcome them. We're also trying to connect deeply with others and find meaning and purpose. But in our experience, there is one thing that often thwarts those efforts to move forward. And it's the idea of being a victim, okay? Now, being a victim is actually something we all go through. Right here on the board, I've listed a few things that inevitably happen in our life. These are circumstances that are painful, that are hard, and they inevitably come. For example, some of us feel like we might be a victim of mental health, that hits some of us. Illness, injury, never being married. Maybe we were deeply offended or hurt in a certain case. Feeling left out, there's rumors, there's addiction, there's death, all kinds of things happen to us in this life. So really in essence, the truth is we kind of are all victims to a degree. But what we wanna point out here is that there's something very different about being a victim versus having a victim mentality or playing the role of a victim. So let's look at these differences because once we realize those two columns are different, it will empower us in our lives. Okay, so the victim mentality or the role of a victim is when we actually, our natural response and our tendency is to blame, to find fault, we feel bitterness, we feel self-pity, kind of like a woe is me kind of an attitude. We might have a tendency to rebel, cover something up, complain, escape. Now, all of these things here, I think are kind of a natural part of life. It's actually our natural response when something hard happens. But the trick is not to dwell there too long. So things might happen and it's natural to just kind of blame for a minute, vent, complain, want to escape. Those things are normal. But what you want to start looking at in your life is, do you dwell there very long? Because when we dwell there, we don't feel love and we can't heal. So I want you to kind of pause for a minute and look at your life and think about, are there times when I go to this space of the victim mentality or playing the role of a victim? And if you do, you wanna stop and look at it. Is it frequent? Is it often? Have you set up your home there? Do you feel like you've set up shop in this mentality? Some people naturally go there, others don't. And that's why the awareness is so important. We have to take a look at, is that our tendency? Because when we dwell here in the victim mentality, we cannot feel happiness and joy, and it's hard to progress and heal. So that's why we wanna really clear up these differences. I recently saw a documentary on KSL TV, and it highlighted Sean Bradley. Now, some of you might not know who that is. Sean Bradley was a famous basketball player decades ago at BYU. He later went and played professionally. And while he was there, he had a successful career. 
Then years later, his life had moved on and he was out for a bike ride in recent years. And on that bike ride, as he was on his way home, even approaching his neighborhood, accidentally a car hit him. Now, when that car hit him, he flew from his bike and his life changed dramatically in that moment. He was then left paralyzed. And in this documentary, you hear them talk about he and his wife. They talk about how hard those first few months, because really the tendency is to blame, find fault, complain, rebel. Like you have all those feelings of that self-pity, like my life just changed dramatically. And who can I blame for this? So it's a natural process to go through. But what I loved in that documentary, at one point his wife said to him, hold on, this is not who we are. We are not a blaming people. We are not the kind of people to find fault. We're not the kind of people to be live angry and live bitter. And she said, let's make this deliberate, intentional decision to not dwell here. And I loved that because I think once we're aware and once we recognize that some of these tendencies are creeping into our lives, it takes that awareness and then it just takes that deliberate, intentional decision to take a look at it and say, okay, I don't want to live in this space. I desire something better. And the minute you do that, your progress can continue. Your healing can continue. Our brain exercises that we do will work better everything will start to work better as we shift from that one mindset into a healthier mindset. Now, we sometimes have to call each other out on this a little bit because have you ever noticed like sometimes we almost want to dwell there? Why do we like living in this victim mentality? What is it about it? So one of my favorite speeches ever given was given by a man named Lynn G. Robbins, and he gave a speech titled, How We Can All Be 100% Accountable. Now, in that speech, he addresses this question, the question of why do we turn to the victim mentality, and in his speech, he calls this list the anti-responsibility list. Now, his list has a few more things on it, but they're very similar. So he answers this question, then why do we go to those things? Here's his answer. We turn to that list as a defense mechanism to avoid shame and embarrassment, stress and anxiety, and the pain of negative consequences. Rather than repent or change to eliminate guilt, we sedate it with excuses. It gives us a false sense of security that our environment or someone else is to blame, and therefore we have no need to change or repent. He says it halts progress dead in its tracks. So when we hear that, can you hear the answer? Why then would we ever choose to stay in this space? It shifts the responsibility onto someone else. And we're, we don't feel like we have a part to play in it. But as we hear, this is actually just a defense mechanism of our own because we don't want to face the pain that came from it. But the minute we desire to look at it wholeheartedly and take some responsibility for the place we're in mentally or the place we find ourselves in, that's when the floodgates can open. That's when our progress can continue. And that is when the real healing can begin. What happens is it takes us from this list, which is really where our heart is in a state of conflict, and it allows us to move to a state where our heart is at peace. Now what's interesting about this is that nothing changed. Our circumstances don't change. They're still the same circumstances we're up against. But simply desiring and being aware of this negative place we can find ourselves in helps us make that shift. And there are people who can help us. Sometimes we don't see it, but there are people like life coaches, like the Brain Rehab Clinic, who can help point some of these things out. And then you'll be able to see it from a different lens and perspective, and then can keep moving forward wholeheartedly. And that is our goal. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. If any of this content resonates with you, I'd love to set up a 10 to 15 minute consult with you to answer any of your questions and help get you back on that journey moving forward.
So jump on my page at the Brain Rehab Clinic, click on my calendar, and you can set up that 15 minute consult, whether on the phone or via Zoom. Fall in love twice a day with Talk 365 TV on CW30 or anytime online. Talk 365 TV, it's an everlasting love. And welcome back. Uh, interesting to see how people can reprogram the brain. And mm. do you ever feel like on certain days you're just on it, that everything is going to go great? Mm -hmm. You know, it starts, you have a, a feeling in the morning, and it just goes that way. You have confidence through the day, and I think that that confidence affects other people. Mm. Me too. It might be some a customer service thing on the phone where you... Make them happy to begin with. There's a good outcome. You run into people throughout the day. And then conversely, there are other days when you have negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, this day sucks. I can't wait to get it over. And if there was a formula, because people do give off energy. There's just no question about it. Right. And giving off a positive energy makes other people feel positive. I mean, it's kind it of crazy. It all starts with the thought, basically, at the end of the day. And there are so many different approaches that you can look at this, whether through functional neurology, hypnotherapy, psychology. What it comes down to is that thought, and there is energy in that thought. So if it's a negative or a positive, it's going to spiral in a certain direction. And then there's the place that that, net, that energy goes to literally in your brain that that's where it sits. So negative thinking usually sits in the back and forward thinking is present in power. And usually when you feel good and you're positive, you're at the present state because you're in a place of control. And if you're feeling stressed out and out of control, it's usually you're back there in the back. And it's amazing how they know how that works. And so if you have a part of your brain that's been hurt through a brain concussion or a TBI, traumatic brain injury, that will affect the way those negative you know, patterns are firing and wiring in there. And that's where you get emotional stuff from, we know from all the football players who've had traumatic brain oh, injuries. Sure. I mean, the rage and the, and the mood swings and stuff like that, they get it taken care of and all that goes away. You know, it's the same with the opposite. You can get it all taken care of, but if you're not constantly using a strategy to pull your thoughts forward, be in the present, because the present is where all the power is. If you're sitting back in, ain't it awful and running strategies for how things could go negative, your day is not going to be too fun. But you can run strategies all day for things are negative, just the same as you win the lottery. They're both, it hasn't happened yet. So you might as well be thinking positive is what I always start my day thinking. And what happens is when you are positive, you attract better outcomes out of other people. Right, the law I mean, of attraction. Yep. Yeah, law, no question. And an example of that, we were just on a celebrity cruise and, and the people, they somehow hire people who are so positive Ooh. Mm -hmm. in a tough job. And these people, you'll do a 10 day cruise and they'll come back to port and have three hours and everyone leaves and the ship fills up and they do it again. But finding positive people who radiate that joy and happiness Mm -hmm. And it, it just goes out, and I don't want to sound like a uh, hippy-dippy, but it goes out in the universe and it creates good things. You know, there's all kinds of programs out there right now, but that whole concept of do one good thing today, I think that's a great place to end things. Encourage you, get out there, do something good, encourage other people, love on people, spread love and joy. I don't think that's hippy-dippy. I think that's awesome. I love it. Okay, if you want to feel good, do good. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.